Welcome to Spine Guy. I'm Dr. Brian Sue, a fellowship trained spine surgeon. The Spine Guy is a channel dedicated to making the complex spine simple for patients to understand. Today we'll be talking about cervical facet fracture and dislocations, one of the most common injuries to the neck and often what people refer to when they say that there's a broken neck. So first let's start with the anatomy. The cervical spine is of course the neck. So this is the front of the neck, this is the back of the neck, and there's the back of the skull. In the front of the neck, there are bones, and these are called the vertebral bodies. These bones are separated by discs. And in the back of the neck, there are these bones called the lateral masses. And these lateral masses are covered by cartilage above and below, and that's called the facet. Now that facet is part of the facet joint. The facet joint is a real joint. It has cartilage, it has a joint capsule, and there's also synovial fluid so that when you move your neck forward and backwards, these facet joints glide and move perfectly. Here's a normal x-ray and CT showing the cervical facets. So here you'll see the facets in the back of the neck on the x-ray. Uh, this is a direct side view, CT view, also showing the bones. You'll see that the bones are all lined up, one in front of another perfectly. This is, of course, a normal looking CT. And here on the side view of the CT, you'll see the facet joints uh, as well as the cervical facets and lateral masses themselves. So the facets are named by number. There's a C3, C4, C5, C6 facets. The joint, which is the joint in between, is named by the bones at sandwiches. So that's a C3, 4 joint, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, 7 facet joint, etc. So you can imagine that high energy accidents that lead to abnormal flexion and distraction of this joint can lead to significant cervical facet injuries. So these are usually from hitting your head from things like diving, surfing, high impact sports uh, like football or ice hockey, sometimes there's spear tackling, or falling from a significant height and hitting your neck down and your head down. So one of my patients with a cervical facet injury happened to have the event filmed by his wife when he was doing a zip lining stunt. So first I'm going to show you this video, which by the way is pretty graphic, and afterwards we'll talk about his injury and how we treated him. Yeah, yeah. Alright, here we go. One. Ah! ah! You okay? So facet injuries can range anywhere from needing to be taken by stretcher to the emergency room with a significant spinal cord injury or walking away with just some neck pain without really even knowing that you have a facet injury. So we're going to start with the most significant injury, uh, which is a perched or dislocated facet. So here's the cervical spine again, and you can imagine as more and more force is applied to the cervical spine abnormally, the cervical spine starts to walk up one on top of each other like a hill. So first there is a subluxation, which is a little shifting of the bone. Then there's a perch. So the facet is perched here, meaning it's not quite dislocated, but it's just sitting right on top of the other facet. And then lastly, it dislocates and it jumps over. So when it dislocates, it's often called, you'll see that term called jump facets, which is of course the worst injury. So when a facet dislocates, it can be unilateral or bilateral. There are two facets, one on the right, one on the left. So unilateral dislocations on one side, a bilateral dislocations on both sides. X-ray, CT, and MRI are almost always done with these types of injuries. And here you see the progression from a subluxated, so just a little bit slipped, to again perched, to then dislocated both on the x-ray as well as the CT scan. So subluxated facets are not as serious as perch facets, which of course are not as bad as unilateral bilateral facet dislocations. 40% of unilateral facet dislocations are associated with some kind of nerve injury, which can cause arm pain or weakness. And 90% of bilateral facet dislocations, you can imagine as both facets are jumped, there's significant pinching of the spinal cord. And as a result of that, there's spinal cord injury and paralysis. The protocol for treating a subluxated or completely dislocated facet. It's extremely complicated, as you'll see here. This is a protocol that I helped uh, develop in a recent publication. But at the end of the day, almost all of these injuries end up in the operating room, needing plates, rods, screws, cages to stabilize the spine and make the spinal cord safe. Here's a patient with a bilateral facet fracture dislocation who had a spinal cord injury. Here you'll see on CT that one bone is completely translated on top of another. And on the uh, CT scan of the facets, you can see that one facet is in fact, again, completely jumped one on top of another. And here's the MRI, you'll see the spinal cord coming down here. The white stuff is the fluid around the cord. There's a severe spinal cord injury at the C5-6 level. This patient was taken relatively quickly to surgery. 
This is another one of my patients. She's a 47 year old female. She fell from the balcony, had one too many drinks. You'll see on the side view CT, there is some shifting of the bone there. And you'll see on both sides at the C5-6 level that the facets are perched. They're not quite all the way dislocated or jumped, but they're perched. On the MRI, you'll see a lot of spinal cord compression there, both at C4-5 and at C5-6. Thankfully, she didn't have a lot of neurological symptoms, but she did have significant pain. But this is an unstable neck. We took her relatively quickly to the operating room. We did what's called an ACDF, anterior cervical decompression infusion, went through the front of the neck, took the discs out, put spacers and put a plate on, and thankfully she's doing quite well. So let's move on to facet fractures. Facet fractures can occur with or without perching or dislocation of the facet. A facet fracture is a break or fracture in the facet itself. So if this is the facet or the lateral mass, a fracture is essentially a break in the bone itself. So as you can see here, this can be a small piece or a large piece of bone that breaks off. It turns out that many factors go into deciding whether you can treat a cervical spine injury without surgery. This has to do with the type of fracture, neurological status, meaning if somebody has spinal cord injury or nerve root injury, and the status of the surrounding tissues. Facet fractures without subluxation, without dislocation, they tend to be somewhat lower energy injuries and they sometimes can be treated without surgery if there isn't spinal cord or significant nerve injury. And of course, only your surgeon can help you decide that. Some cervical facet fractures can be treated without surgery because despite a break in the bone, the spinal cord and nerves themselves are safe because the break is not affecting the stability of the spine. So how do we look at stability? Stability is measured by two ways in the cervical spine when there's a cervical facet fracture. The first is the cervical spine, these are just the bones here. There's lots of ligaments and surrounding tissues that can help stabilize the spine. So we can use the MRI to look to see whether or not the ligaments are intact. So that's, that's number one. Number two is using x-ray to see if the bones are moving abnormally and that can also imply instability. So there are two things we look at. One is called anterolysis. So that is if we look at a side view or lateral x-ray, we wanna make sure that the bones are stacked on top of each other and they're not slipping. If they're slipping, that usually implies some instability. And that number we look for is typically three and a half millimeters. So if there's less than three and a half millimeters of translation, then we typically say that the spine is stable. The next thing we look at is something called kyphosis which is forward angulation. So you can imagine if there's a fracture, what can happen is there can be some forward angulation or tipping. So stability is if there is less than 11 degrees of forward tipping of that injured level next to the adjacent level. One of the things we can also use to predict if there might be instability and need for surgery is the size of the fracture fragment. So this is a great study that's often cited that says the larger the fracture, the more chance that this cervical facet fracture can lead to instability. So this study looked at CT scans. They essentially found that if the fracture fragment involved more than 40% of the entire height of the normal bone, or if the fracture fragment itself was more than a centimeter, then these patients may go on to instability. So sometimes we can use that as well. In my practice, if you have a set fracture, particularly unilaterally, meaning on one side, and you don't have evidence of spinal cord or nerve injury, then I will treat patients initially non-surgically in a hard cervical collar. So, we will have patients wear a collar like this, a hard cervical collar for six to 12 weeks. You have to wear this collar 24 seven, so you really stabilize the neck. And what we'll do is we'll get a lateral standing x-ray every week for the first two to three weeks, and then every two weeks for the next four to six weeks. The reason we do this is we wanna make sure that over time, as your body heals that facet fracture, that the spine does not become progressively unstable, doesn't fall into anterolysis, angulation, or kyphosis. The studies show that if you are gonna fail non-surgical treatment, these failure happen in the first 10 to 12 weeks. Also, the reason I like to trial non-surgical treatment first if you have a stable spine is because even if your spine becomes unstable, it usually doesn't do so completely overnight. These are usually gradual degrees of instability without catastrophic failures. So let's go back to my patient with a zip lining injury. When I looked at that video, I thought that for sure he was gonna have a dislocated neck but thank goodness he did not. Um, he had neck pain, some right-sided arm pain. You can see the MRI here shows that the spinal cord is safe. There's no spinal cord compression. Here's a lateral standing x-ray. This was in fact a few weeks after his injury. You'll see that he really does not have significant kyphosis. He has a slight bit of anterolysis or translation, but not too bad. Here's a CT that shows he has a right-sided C7 facet fracture. It was unilateral only on the right side. 
When you look at the fracture fragment, it is significant. It's more than 40% of the height of the lateral mass. So we really did talk about surgery versus no surgery. He really wanted to avoid surgery, uh, understandably so. So we did put him in a hard cervical collar for three months. We got these serial x-rays to make sure that he didn't become progressively unstable. So here you see a CT scan, which is six months out from the injury. You'll see that the facet has totally healed. So ultimately his neck pain got better, his arm pain got better, and he is a happy camper. And I did let him return to his normal activities after six months. So now you get a chance to hear directly from him at the six month follow up and how he is never going to do stupid things off a zip line again. Okay, here we go. This is Jason. He had that horrible injury with a neck fracture and horrible neck pain at first and some arm pain. So tell us about your symptoms initially. Initially, uh, numbness and pain throughout my hand, mostly in the uh, three lower fingers. Uh, obviously, uh, numbness all the way down and pretty severe pain. Uh, right over the uh, C5, C6 area. So he had, he had that fracture mm -hmm. and we could have fixed them surgically, but not all fractures require surgical treatment. We decided to watch it using x-rays. We tortured him in this thing, <laughs> this hard collar for three, four months. But here he is taking his collar off and tell us about your current symptoms, how your neck pain is. Yeah, so right now, uh, no real discomfort over the spine. I get a little bit of discomfort on uh, the lateral sides of my neck, but it's only, you know, usually during sleeping. Um, obviously when I'm standing up too much, I get some back pain. Um, so I just sit down, relax and that kind of thing. So we're going to start physical therapy, mm -hmm. gentle strengthening of the neck, and I think you're going to be okay. <laughs> now tell me, what were you thinking doing the flip and the zip one? I was thinking I have no fear because of my job. <laughs> I had forgotten that I was almost 50 years old. He's a paramedic. He's, yeah, which is the stink of the whole thing because I knew right away what I had done or at least the area what I had done to myself. Uh, so I was looking to have a great time with my wife after our kids had left the house or getting ready to leave the house and we were going to be free. This was our first vacation. This happened less than 24 hours. <laughs> our first... <laughs> Our first trip out. <laughs> where, where were you? We were in Tennessee. Tennessee. Yeah. Well, look, I think you're going to be okay. Just no more diving off zip lines, but you can still go zip lining. That is correct. All right, buddy. So no surgery for you. That's awesome. All right, man. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something about cervical facet fractures and dislocations and their treatment. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe button.